Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at converting 3D motions to 2D motions for reuse with 2D characters by using camera projection in the 3D motion converter. Let's start off by finding a 3D motion that we want to convert. On the screen right now we have the same character in two different angle profiles. What I'm going to do is take this 3D change pose animation and apply it to my 45 degree facing character. Our 3D motion converter window will pop up and you can see the results if we play back and adjust the camera projection angle simultaneously. You can also adjust the window in order to increase the 3D viewport size for a better look or adjust the splitter between the viewport and the parameters below it. To navigate the 3D viewport, you can use the zoom, move, and rotate buttons. Your right mouse button will also rotate, and if you click both right and left mouse buttons, then you can zoom. You can use the home button to reset to the default view. Keep in mind that your camera angle and the 3D viewport will affect your 2D animation. However, there are camera projection angle presets to make it easier. Just like in the regular timeline, you can adjust the playback length by moving the red triangle on the playback indicator. You can also turn off the loop option as well. Breaking the link between 2D character and your 3D dummy can be achieved by clicking on the Link Activated button. You can toggle this back and forth to activate or deactivate the link between the two characters. If you want to apply the same animation to a different 2D character on the screen, then simply select the character with Link Activated and it will pop into the initial pose of the animation. You can then adjust the camera projection angle appropriately and play back. In addition to the other controls, you can also adjust the playback speed of the motion by using the drop down menu in the timeline area. A lower value will make the animation slower, while a higher value will increase the speed. Once you apply your motion to the timeline, it will follow those same values that you've set. Next, we're going to talk about the lock to hip feature. Let's see the difference when we apply the same animation to both of these characters. You'll notice when I play back the first animation, midway through the animation our character's legs will have a weird twist. To fix this, there is an option in the camera projection section called Lock to Hip. If we enable this and play back, notice that the camera will now orbit the hip in the 3D viewport as if it's attached, and the leg twisting issue will be resolved. You can see a 3D visualization of what lock to hip does here. If the motion you're applying to your character has frequently changing angles, it's recommended to enable the lock to hip option. In the side by side playback, you can see a big difference. This image demonstrates why that issue occurs. If the 3D animation angle changes, but the camera projection angle remains the same, then the bone on the leg will attempt to compensate for the angle change by applying an incorrect bone angle to the 2D character's leg. If you want your 2D character to be able to turn, you'll need to become familiar with the body flip feature. If we play back this walking motion and adjust the camera projection angle, you can see that our character will have a super awkward result where the body is twisted. What we need to do to remedy this is to enable the flip body checkbox in the motion section. This will enable us to adjust the camera projection angle to both 45 degree angles and still get the proper results, with our character flipping automatically. Ok finally let's talk about camera tracking and root motions. One issue you may encounter with motions where your character actually moves forward or backward is that the camera angle in the 2D viewport won't keep up with it, and your character will simply walk off the screen. This can easily be remedied by enabling the camera tracking checkbox near the bottom of your import 3D motion window. Once we do, you'll see the camera follow along with our character. There's also a similar feature in the 3D viewport in the side toolbar at the bottom. If we disable this, then the 3D camera will no longer track the dummy 3D character's transform position. If we enable it, then it will again be locked onto the character's position and follow along. Finally, there's also an option to enable root motion. What this will do if selected is keep your character's transform position at the root. Essentially, it removes all transform data from your character's hip bone, 
meaning that it will not move forward or backward at all. This can be used if you want to manually determine the transform position of your character in the scene later on. After you're all set, you can go ahead and apply the motion to the timeline and manually adjust the transform position of your character. We can do this by simply moving our character forward in our scene at the end of the animation. You'll see a green line appear behind her to indicate the distance traveled in that time. That's all I want to cover in this tutorial guys. Be sure to check out our other 3D Motion Converter tutorials to learn more about this awesome tool, and I'll see you in the next video.